Hello, my name is Mark Hauser, the Ecology Outreach Manager with Friends of the Chicago River. I'd like to welcome you to Creating a Litter-Free Chicago Calumet River System. This workshop is proudly presented by the Center for Great Lakes Literacy and by Friends of the Chicago River. It is focused on the issue of litter in our river from a teacher's perspective. Teaching a litter-free curriculum, leading a litter-free service learning project, including work days, and collecting litter-free data for academic research and for classroom lessons. Friends of the Chicago River is a member of the Litter-Free Chicago and Calumet River Task Force. This extraordinary partnership also includes the Mars Wrigley Foundation, the Shedd Aquarium, Loyola University Chicago, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, REI, and Waste Management. Our featured presenter for this video is Ms. Terry Halsey. Terry is the Educator and Student Engagement Coordinator for the Illinois Indiana Sea Grant Program. She leads efforts to improve Great Lakes education in the region. Well, thank you, Mark, for this wonderful presentation that we have for teachers today. And I'm very excited about being here. As Mark mentioned, um, I'm affiliated with Illinois Indiana Sea Grant as the educator and student engagement coordinator. And the other hat I wear is a co-lead for our Center for Great Lakes Literacy. And I'm going to share um, a lot about that center today with you, some of the professional development opportunities, resources, networking, and stipends that are available for you. So without further ado, um, the Center for Great Lakes Literacy, we actually got started back in 2006. We were called the Center of Ocean Science Education Excellence, which is a mouthful. And it was a grant that we got. Um, COSI was mainly located um, in marine areas and we were the first Great Lakes Center to uh, be awarded. Unfortunately, we lost our funding in 2010. So my Great Lakes colleagues and I decided we would put in our own proposal. And fortunately we were funded. And so we became, we morphed into the Center for Great Lakes Literacy. So our vision um, is that we want to help create a Great Lakes literate public, which contributes to the environmental, economic, and social sustainability of the Great Lakes. And with that, we try and provide hands-on experiences, educational resources, networking opportunities, as I mentioned, and with the end all of promoting Great Lakes literacy. And our audience, our educators, scientists, and citizens to foster informed and responsible decision-making to advance basin-wide stewardship. The framework of the work that we do um, is based on the Great Lakes literacy principles. Back in the day, there were ocean literacy principles, um, which were revised in 2013. And we decided and some colleagues took the initiative to develop our own principles because let's face it, the Great Lakes are great. So there are, unlike the ocean literacy principles, we have eight principles and I won't take the time to read through all of these. You can download these off of our website, but I just wanna point out um, some of the fundamental concepts which you can find under each principle, the uh, first one being bodies of fresh water. We deal with the many features that connect us to the world ocean. There are also natural forces that talk about the geological features of the watersheds. We deal with climate and weather. We discuss habitats. We, number five, as you can see, deals with the diversity of life and goes into different, what makes up an ecosystem. I would say probably uh, what's most relevant these days is number six, which deals with how the Great Lakes influence humans and how humans are influenced by the Great Lakes. And we can see that playing out today 
with a lot of things that are happening, like with climate change, uh, community resiliency, flooding, some of the other things that we're seeing. Uh, number seven deals with uh, things that are still being discovered. And that can be through shipwrecks or uh, underwater robotics and roves. But the thing I really want to point out is that, like I said, we have an eighth principle, which I think is really amazing. The Great Lakes are socially, economically, and environmentally significant to the region, the nation, and the planet. Um, again, it's bringing awareness and understanding to students about the Great Lakes and all of the wonderful things that go on within the Great Lakes Basin. So here's an example of one of the ways that you can, using the literacy principles, um, engage your students, increase their vocabulary and understanding by doing things like concept maps or word maps, which can provide guidance or instruction about the Great Lakes. And it also helps to provide a framework for consistent messaging and well-rounded programming. And I wanted to share some examples of, of things that colleagues in some of the other Great Lakes states are doing. In Michigan, or excuse me, in Ohio, there is Ohio Sea Grant uh, Stone Laboratory, which offers a week-long laboratory experience with a lot of hands-on uh, activities for, for teachers and gets them out in the field so that they're really learning about science. Pennsylvania Sea Grant has Newspapers and Education, which has a plethora of activities and lessons that you can, as an educator, incorporate into your classroom instruction. And then Michigan Sea Grant offers summer discovery cruises on Lake Erie and Lake St. Clair every year. So what is Sea Grant? Well, we come under the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration umbrella. They oversee the National Sea Grant College program. We are one of 33 Sea Grant programs. There's one for every coastal and Great Lakes state. We are unusual in that we're a two-state program. So Purdue, if you don't already know it, Purdue University is our other university that's affiliated with us. And we apply science-based knowledge to solve urgent and critical environmental issues. Our focus at Illinois Indiana Sea Grant is on South Lake Michigan. So we have very uh, varied and numerous curriculum and resources that are available for you, um, trying to cover all of the relevant and significant topic areas. You can look up at the top. We have a curriculum that deals with freshwater and salt. There are 14 activities. They've been aligned with the ocean literacy principles. We also deal with aquatic invasive species. Um, Adopt a Habitatitude deals with how to develop a healthy attitude to become aware of aquatic invasive species, the issues that they cause, the economic, ecological, impact and how we can work together to reduce that impact. Lake Michigan by the numbers is based on two buoys that we own and a workshop was given at Purdue University. The teachers actually came up with the lessons that are included in this curriculum. It's for grades six to 12. And so I hope you'll take a look at that. Um, it can be downloaded and it works with incorporating and downloading the data that's available through the buoys um, into your classroom instruction. Another one of our very popular topics, and we were at the forefront and one of the first back in the day to develop awareness about how to properly dispose of unwanted medicine and pharmaceutical products. So we have several curriculum and have a whole program based around that that we work with schools and the public to learn how to properly, whether it's through a take back program or working within a community to become good stewards of not flushing unwanted medicines down the toilet or emptying them into our body streams. So like I said, please um, take a look at these uh, numerous resources that are available for you. In addition, we also have through Seagull a trash trunk 
And this is a loanable trunk that contains an education guide with 14 lessons and resources to perform activities that deal with marine debris, the impact, and how to address it. And then we also have Pollution Prevention Explorer, which again is a sortable list of external resources and it deals with topics on water pollution and pollution prevention. Uh, last fall uh, through December 5th, we offered four uh, virtual workshops and the educators were responsible for doing an action plan uh, by completing an action plan, they were awarded a stipend, which we uh, continue to have available for you if you'd be interested in doing an action plan. So I just wanted to share an example of one of those action plans with you. Under the regular biology course, ecology, you can see that this instructor used the Hoosier River Watch to connect students with the importance of taking care of land around them. And this dealt with marine debris and water quality. Uh, they discussed key issues of water scarcity, cleanliness, and the impact water has on various ecosystems. They did preliminary data gathering, so the number of types of trees they encountered, uh, macroinvertebrates, and various bird species native to, this was done in Indiana, the wetland. They collected trash, monitored invasives, and maintained an area for educational purposes. And then their end all was to create information presentation for school board, the local community to raise awareness and support, which they presented. Then in the AP biology course, they read the nonfiction selection of the death in Great Lakes, of the Great Lakes. They worked with Illinois Indiana Sea Grant to monitor stream life, calculated the IBI of the area. They did some scientific observation with observing, counting, and identifying various wildlife in the area. And you can read on and on there um, with the end all of, they looked at the mental, physical, and emotional benefits of playing in the dirt specific to education, social science of being outside. So in the majority of the work that we do, we incorporate stewardship. And it's the, the end goal of the, the Great Lakes uh, fostering a stewardship ethic with our educators and students. I just included a couple photos here. Uh, the top left was a restoration activity that we did. This took place at Indiana Dunes National Lake Shore. And even though it was a 90 something plus degree day, these teachers were just amazing. They were digging up invasives and planting natives in their place. On the right there, this was a collaboration with Alliance for the Great Lakes, which I would encourage those of you that are interested in doing a stewardship project. If you wanna do a beach cleanup, they are available to help you. And the bottom photo is with the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum. And this was a water quality activity that teachers were doing. So for those of you that have done stewardship, you know that it offers many, many rewards. It gets kids out of the classroom and out in the field so that they're actually doing science and not just learning about it in a book. It helps to make learning fun. It, I really like that it has lifelike transferable skills, things like decision-making and leadership and teamwork, problem solving. And it helps students feel like they're a part of their community. Students oftentimes don't even know what makes up a community. Helps to empower them and make them agents for change and helping to make a difference. And with that, I will take questions and Joan is available on the call as well, or we can save them to the end. Hi, Terry, it's Micah. Just a quick question, like how does a teacher go about applying for one of those um, like action plan topics? Like how do we, how does that happen? So you can contact Joan and me and we have an actual application process that we'd be more than happy to share with you. Um, it would require you doing some sort of action plan um, stewardship project with your students. And I can go over the details with you at a later time. But if you'll send us an email, we can make sure that we get back in touch with you and go through that process. And um, we then have stipends available 
based on the uh, compilation of your project. We also have something on the uh, Center for Great Lakes Literacy called Teacher Feature. And so we rotate uh, states, but every month we feature a teacher. So if your project is really exciting and cool, as I'm sure it would be, um, there would be an opportunity for you to be featured, which is always exciting for the students too, as well. So please make sure you get in touch with us, Micah. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much, Terry. Okay, thank you. For your presentation, that was wonderful.